Starting with a complete running car, my dad and I began to strip down each piece in order to restore it to its full splendor. As you can see from the pictures, we stripped it down to its barest form. It took a little over two years to get the car into the condition that you see it at now. At this point, we realized that we needed to work on the underside easily, which brings us up to this point, making a car rotisserie. Here's an overview of the plans for the car rotisserie. Here are some different perspectives of the design as well. It's difficult to explain how it works, but the bottom left picture gives you the best idea. We'll begin constructing the flat piece where the two wheels come in, and then begin by connecting the top rail and then squaring it up. Safety equipment must have welding gloves and a shield. This is an auto darkening shield. It makes it a lot easier to work with. It's able to, it's transparent when you're not welding and then it uh, automatically darkens once you uh, start the welding process. It's real important to keep all welds clean, all the metal to be clean. After each weld, you have to brush it off and uh, start back over with fresh metal. There's a slag or a residue that's left after the welding process, so every time you stop and start again, you have to re-clean the surface. Notice it's, it's, when it's welding, it sounds a lot like fast baking cooking. Before, it was, we want to use a, what they call a triple pass on every weld. Uh, we're going to be laying under this car while it's supported by the welds that we did. I think it's time to invest in some new gloves. Yes! <laughs> that looks good. She does look good. Alright, go ahead and hit it with the angle grinder to get... Slide. Yeah, let me see if I can get a close up. All those dots and bumps that you see all over it, that's metal slag. That's the splatter that you see uh, landing on the metal while it's still hot and it actually sticks to it and it leaves a, a dirty look to it. So Shane will now angle grinder that off using the uh, sanding disc of the angle grinder. But it's not a dangerous tool, those are just sparks. This is what an angle grinder is. It just spins a disc around at a high velocity, and this has a sanding disc on it, which has sandpaper laid sideways, uh, glued together, and it really does a good job of taking metal away. Nice shiny surface, look at that, no slag. Right here, we're trying to line up where the three pieces meet, but the top piece wiggles a bit, so we need to grind it down later. And flatten it up. We're also trying to line up the angle supports as well because it's very important to have them lined up before you start welding since welding is a process that is permanent. If you look at the top of the picture you can see where it says rotating sleeve. This is where we will continue construction in the next video clip. There are several spots throughout this process that require some drilling. These holes here or to uh, control the rotation. It's a lock point for the car rotisserie so that there are several, there's uh, four fixed points uh, that the car can stay stationary at without rotating. A pin will go through these holes. The next few days required a lot of drilling for the project. If you look at the top where the rotating sleeve is, it needs to fit into that vertical piece in a semicircle. Now this cut is pretty difficult because there's not really a good way to cut out a perfect circle. We decided to use a tool called a hole saw and find one that was the same diameter as the width of the vertical pipe. This will allow for almost a perfect semicircle to be cut. When we make large cuts like this, we usually use oil to reduce the friction. This prevents our hole saw or any of our blades from dulling out too much. Kind of throwing the tape measure out on this. This is uh, the main rotator clamped into the vise coming up. There's different holes drilled into it uh, around the entire circumference. This will allow for the car to be positioned 
upside down, and basically eight different angles. Uh, and that's the main goal, is to make it easier to work on the underside of the car. Uh, the next piece that goes on, I'm going to slide on back to here, is the collar. The collar will just simply weld right there. And it needs to be pretty exact because it has uh, another piece that slides on, on the top of it. That welds to the actual car rotisserie. And then these holes need to line up exactly. After drawing the holes, this is the piece that you come up with. This is the part where the rotating assembly is, and it will allow the car to actually rotate 360 degrees. Well, it's starting to take shape now. Been working on this front rotator assembly. There's a lot of small cuts and small welds, and I'm finding that the the small cuts are more difficult than the large cuts. Um, so now all I've got to do is tack weld about 18 of these into place. I'm using the nut for the bolt lined up through the hole attached to a nut on the inside. I don't know if you can see it in there. But uh, holding that from both sides so that the bolt is definitely going to fit after I weld it into place. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and tack this in and see how it goes. Well, this is all the uh, lock nuts and bolts welded in. You can see by tightening down one way and then this way, you're able to get 360 degrees of uh, compression on that one sleeve with four points of contact. That'll keep the uh, assembly from sliding out the bottom. Now it's time for a lot of welding because we need to weld the angle supports in and also there's a gusset on the back side of this picture that you can't see that we need to weld in for support. Yeah, hey, is it cool if I start right there or do I need to do a whole nother run? Do a whole nother run. Or should no, I mean you can start right there and fill that in. Yeah, I'm gonna fill it in. Right Look at that. And that's a weld with the slag on it, that black coating. And the black coating off. Shane laid on that. We're sticking metal together, people. There's the metal. Don't look at the bright light. Woo! Beautiful. As you can see, plenty of welding is done, and after many more hours of this, we end up finishing the angle supports and the T frame. Today on The Welder, we have Jim Weirwill. Jim's attaching the gussets that'll give it a little more addition, uh, give it a lot more strength uh, for when the car swings sideways and then it's still a bit different direction. Hang in. We paid Jim good money to do this. Once again, there's plenty more welding to do. Uh, this part is the gussets that I spoke about earlier. This is just a triangle piece of steel that slides in and it's used for extra support. After a tremendous amount of time and welding, the entire structure is complete. Now it's just time to give it a paint job. We simply use a spray can to paint it since we don't want to spend a lot of money on a good paint job because it's going to get nicked up a lot. It's taken three weeks, about 60 hours of work, and about $800 in materials to get us to this point. It's much easier to explain how this works now that you can actually see it. By building this, we are able to flip the car 360 degrees, and this will allow us to work on the bottom side of the car much easier. Well guys, this is it. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned a thing or two.